Good morning, everybody. Uh, let's start off with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you uh, for the, the things that just around us that will uh, remind us of, of you. Uh, thank you that we just don't, uh, we don't have to look very far uh, to see that you are working, uh, that you are um, there for us. And Lord, uh, help us to remember that, that you'll never leave us. Um, it's always us who tends to leave you. And help us, Lord, to, to realize that and help us to learn something about you today. We ask these things in your name. Amen. So, uh, one of the things that our, uh, uh, I think maybe our society does, and uh, um, hopefully I think some of these principles are, are really good, uh, is that uh, we value uh, you know, the um, hard work. And so a lot of times when we uh, set a goal out or if we're trying to uh, tell someone uh, how we are supposed to achieve something, a lot of times we'll, we'll start out and say, well, you have to do this, this, and this to get to, uh, to, get to your destination. Or you have to uh, maybe start out here and then build and then be a little patient and keep on working. And uh, hopefully that's something that uh, maybe that we uh, all realize is that uh, some things are, are only possible with, with hard work and that we, you know, we have to kind of work through things. In a lot of cases, that takes pre perseverance and it takes uh, patience. Uh, a couple of, of things that uh, we, uh, a couple of uh, quotes that, that I found that sort of go along with that train of thought. And maybe you've heard some of these. Um, I think they're probably, in a lot of cases, uh, good, to, good pieces of advice. Uh, but one is, uh, the only thing uh, that overcomes hard luck is hard work. Um, let's see, hard work uh, spotlights character. Some turn up their sleeves and get to work. Uh, some turn up their noses and avoid it altogether. And some just don't turn up at all. Uh, and then this last one is, uh, work is when preparation meets opportunity. And so all these quotes, and, and again, you can think about uh, maybe some of the advice that you've been given over the years is if you want something, you have to work hard for it. And remember that uh, uh, when we look at our lesson today, Christ really came and, and, and said almost the opposite of that. Uh, and today we're going to learn about uh, the message and, and uh, what we can, uh, really how little we can do to earn it uh, and just how much of a free gift it is. Uh, let's start on uh, page 120, and this is in Romans 8, I'm sorry, Romans 10, 8b through 10. And it says, The message is near you, in your heart, uh, in your mouth, and in your heart. This is the message of faith that we proclaim. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, mouth uh, resulting in salvation. Uh, and so one of the things uh, I was thinking about, especially going back up to 8B, is you know how often do we lo lose our focus on, on the true message? Um, what struck me there is that you know the message is near you. Uh, it's not something we have to necessarily go looking for. It's not something that um, we uh, you know have to strive for. It's it's some, it's not something that we have to um, go and 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 perform some type of um, uh, maybe you know hard work uh, to try to achieve. Uh, but here it's right near to us, and it's something that we can access directly. Something that we can uh, go through uh, and uh, and have uh, immediately. And I was thinking, you know, how often do we lose our focus? We can lose our focus in all sorts of things. Uh, we can lose our focus when. Uh, we get busy. We can lose our focus uh, when we start looking at how much uh, other people have, and we and always remember that there's somebody somebody always worse off than than, than you are. Uh, we can lose our focus maybe when um, you know we we set our priorities in the wrong place. Uh, when we say, well, our priority is is uh, um, you know maybe uh, getting ahead, or maybe our priorities is making ourselves look good. Um, all those things can take our focus off of uh, of off of Christ and the message that is. Needed to us. Uh, you know, how often do we look for greener grass? How often do we forget the blessings that um, God has given us in the past? We often have a short-term memory when it comes to those things that are um, uh, that, that God has blessed us with. We often forget about those when times get tough or when uh, we start uh, maybe tr trying to think that we can do things on our own. And how often do we forget God's promises to, to never leave us? Um, I've got some verses for us uh, here, and I was talking about, you know, uh, the message is near to you. How do we maintain our focus on that mes message 
that's near to us? How do we not get sidetracked on the things uh, where maybe that we can say are far away or something that where we you know, cast our eyes and, and we, want to, uh, we want to have what they have instead of ours or of what we have? And this is in Philippians uh, 4. Um, and we'll start with uh, verse uh, 5. Uh, Philippians 4 verse 5 it says let your gentleness be known to all men the Lord is at hand be anxious for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication uh, with thanksgiving let your uh, request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds um, through Christ Jesus uh, and so this is the the part that I was really uh, aiming for and it's, it's something again that you've probably all heard uh, many times before and it talks about really how can we be disciplined about what we think about how can we be disciplined about what we focus on how can we be disciplined about concentrating on the message that is near to us instead of looking uh, far off and in, into things that maybe uh, God doesn't want maybe God wants to keep away from us it says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if, if uh, there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Uh, and so one of the things that we can do to make sure that we keep our, the message near to us, and it's the message that's always near to us, uh, is just really to be disciplined in what we concentrate on. Um, some other things that, that I brought up are that came to mind uh, is that sometimes you know that's really difficult to do especially when we're going through hard times when we're going through uh, times when uh, we maybe think that uh, God has forsaken us and uh, we're not we're not alone in those feelings and there the, the scripture is filled with uh, lots of people who have uh, gone through those same things uh, I was reading uh, in Psalms and this is in Psalm 22 And this is um, verse 22, uh, verse 1. And how many times have we thought about this? And, and I was thinking about, you know, this message being near to us. How many times have we forgotten that that message, uh, that that comforter, uh, that, uh, that help has been near to us? And how many times have we felt like the psalmist here? Uh, what he says in Psalm 22, verse 1, it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so, so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear me. And in the night season, and am not silent. And so here, even uh, someone that um, you know, we a lot of times look up to as a, a someone who's maybe great in the faith, who definitely had his flaws. Uh, even he was something um, that uh, you know he had trouble uh, getting through the tough times, and he forgot about that message, uh, just like we all do. That so that should be near to us. And one of the things that we can do is remember uh, how God has blessed us in the past and how much he is, uh, even though it, sometimes there are, there are times when we feel so close to God and there are some times when we feel so distant. And one of those things that, you know, how do we, how do we, uh, how do we revive? How do we uh, get that message to a point where uh, we feel that closeness to him? Or how, how do we uh, draw near? One of the things that we can do is rely on the, on the promises uh, that God has for us in scripture. Um, I'm, Thinking about uh, primarily, there's a good verse, um, good section of verses in Isaiah. Uh, this is Isaiah um, 41, and we'll kind of jump around to 41 and then go to 43. In 41.10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. You know, he's near to us. That message is near to us. Uh, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And skipping on over to verse uh, chapter 43, verse 2. Uh, let's see. And it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. So even in those times, God can, uh, God will be with us, and I'm sure we've all experienced when we felt that closeness to God, uh, witnessed uh, His, um, you know, miraculousness, um, and often we forget about those in times that um, are, are are difficult. And I'm reminded of the of the um, you know the children of Israel when they were uh, going through the wilderness. A lot of times, you know, they would they saw firsthand God's miracles, uh, but they also uh, very very quickly uh, forgot about what they uh, did. Um, or what God did for them. And in some cases, uh, God was, um, you know, or 
the people put up uh, monuments. Uh, they had some and they would put monuments up. And you think, well, what are the purpose of monuments? The monuments are uh, there to remind us of something. Uh, in this case, it was talked about uh, raising an Ebenezer, and really the Ebenezer is a, uh, stand, uh, means the stone of help. Uh, and so we have to remember that God is always there. Uh, he's always with us, and he's always uh, wanting to help us. Um, sometimes he's trying to maybe build our character. Sometimes maybe he's uh, wanting us to, to go through something, to show us something. But he is always there with us, and he'll never leave us or nor forsake us. Um, let's go on. Let's see, uh, talking about uh, going on to that uh, verse. This is in your mouth and in your heart, talking about the message being in our mouth and our heart. This is the message of faith that we proclaim. Um, one of the things that um, should happen is that if once we have experience, have experience with Christ, uh, we should, um, you know, our, our behavior should change. Uh, there should be some evident, um, evidence of, of our walk with Christ. Uh, the things that, we, that used to maybe bring us joy, maybe bring us excitement, we now see, uh, we should put those in the light of Christ and say, is this something that Christ would want us to do? Is this something that we should uh, be striving for? Is this something that I should have my heart on? And if that's the case, then that evidence is going to come through in our behavior. Uh, and the way we act and the way that uh, we interact with people is going to be changed. And lastly, it says here in 8b, uh, the faith that we proclaim. And so that should bring us excitement. And it should, be, it should bring us excitement not only for our lives, but it should bring us excitement. Usually when you think about proclaiming something, you think about, loudly. Uh, you think about something, uh, well at least when I do, I think about uh, proclaiming something. I think about something I want everybody to know about, some piece of good news. Uh, and we should be thinking about our, our faith in terms of that as good news and something that we should be excited about, something that we should be joyful for. Uh, in verse 9 it says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Uh, and so going back to this, uh, those quotes uh, that I read to you, uh, earlier about uh, the, the value of hard work and um, you know how hard work shows our character and um, how we need to prepare and, and things like that. You know, th it's kind of the opposite here. In in verse nine, God is saying, you know, these are this is all you have to do. This is this is how easy it is. It's such a, a gift to us that don't we don't have to achieve. Uh, and actually, if we've um, if we've uh, encountered Christ, is something that even really shouldn't be that difficult for us. Uh, it says, confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved in the story. Uh, and so this is something that is good news to us and, and something that um, if we, you know, if we really had a, had a, have had a, a heart uh, change, that's something that's going to be evident and it's going to come through in the way we speak. It's going to come through the way we interact with people. It's, come, it's going to come through with the decisions that we make. Uh, it's going to come through in the, in, the, in the way that we carry ourselves. People should be able to see Christ uh, in us. Um, one of the things I was uh, thinking about is that a lot of times uh, when we think about um, you know sharing our faith, uh, a lot of times uh, you know this is me included is that uh, it, it gets uh, it, it gets a little scary uh, and it gets um, you know it's, it's you can feel fearful. Um, and I was thinking about you know it should be it should be the other way around. Um, it should be difficult to hide. Uh, in other words, if we've been with Christ, if we've um, you know learned from Christ, if we have have stepped into that area of faith where we're relying on Christ, that should be difficult to hide. Uh, people should be able to see it. And I'm reminded of the verse that says, "Are we going to hide it? You know, under a basket or a bushel?" Uh, the answer is no, or not. Uh, we can't. Uh, and so hopefully that transformation has taken place in such. A, a factor that people will see that. Um, I don't think it's intended to be overbearing. I don't think it's uh, uh, you know something that um, you know is forceful uh, necessarily. It's not something that that we have to uh, maybe put on display or try uh, to. to to put on display, but it's something that should happen naturally. And when people see our lives, when people see the way that that uh, we are are conducting ourselves and, and what we do and what brings us joy and what um, and, and how we uh, deal with things that maybe aren't going very well, that's when people really see Christ in our life. Uh, the second part of that, so the first part is confessing or making sure people can see a change in our life. Uh, and the other part is believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Um, 
and uh, one of the things that I was thinking about is that you know just uh, just saying things, uh, saying all the right things, uh, giving lip service, uh, isn't something uh, that doesn't mean that there's a transformation there. Um, and I was reminded of a, a couple of verses in Matthew. The first one is in Matthew uh, seven twenty two. And it says, uh, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So these are people who, who even actually, uh, you could even say we're halfway there, you know, that confess, that, um, you know, gave good lip service, but Christ said, there has to be a transformation there. Uh, really, that's the prerequisite for, for anything is that we are hard has to be changed and once that change is uh, taking place then uh, whatever um, you know whatever display whatever uh, type of uh, um, outshowing that that we may have uh, that will come naturally to us um, there's another verse in Matthew 15 um, verse 8. And it says, these people, and again, talking about, you know, sort of being halfway there, it says, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So this is saying, you know, if, if you're just saying all the right things, uh, if you are um, saying uh, what people want to hear, that's not good enough. Uh, we are, there has to be a transformation. And God knows our heart. He knows if that transformation has been there. He knows... Um, what we struggle with he knows uh what we've done in the past um and he still loves us on top of that and if we release that if we give our heart to him um he will make sure uh that the the rest is, is there like i was saying before if we've had that transformation if we've had heart change um the display of that will be evident to others <clears throat> Um, now, one of the things that um, is interesting in verse 10, it says, one believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth. And, and so one of the things that um, your quarterly brings out is that uh, the order that they are presented there is actually reversed. Uh, so it says, if uh, verse 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth, and then it says, believe. And then in verse 10, it says, if you believe, and then confess with their mouth. So uh, one of those things where it's not like we go maybe um, step by step and have a checkbox and, and say, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. What we, you know, what we can bring with that is those two are intertwined. Uh, those two are connected. And so we can, you know, we, once we've had, once we've changed our heart, or actually once Christ has changed our heart, uh, what uh, comes out of our mouth, um, what we do, how we behave, that's going to be different. You really can't have one without the other. <clears throat> so let's go on. And it says, uh, this is in Romans 10, 11 through 13. It says, For the scripture says, Everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, since there is no distinction uh, among people, because the same Lord of all richly blesses all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so this is just something that says, you know what, this is... Um, uh, this is, uh, you know, this is open to everyone. This is free to everyone. This is something that is going to be there uh, for everyone. And we can't uh, limit ourselves. Um, we can't limit God's kingdom to, to anyone who shows up. Um, or we can't limit uh, what uh, Christ uh, has in store for us just for those people uh, who we think are worthy. Uh, we have to make sure that, uh, you know, you know, by, by the grace, but for the uh, grace of God, you know, there we would be. Uh, and so, and maybe some of us are there. Uh, and so this is something we, we definitely want to make sure that we are not excluding people, uh, that we um, are uh, including people to share Christ's good news. And one, remember, we are not uh, responsible for, for cleaning up, um, you know, people's lives. We're not actually, we can't clean up our lives um, without Christ's help. And he is the ultimate cleaner, uh, and he will do that. And again, if you've been a truly a, 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 um, a change in your heart, then that's something that will be evident. <clears throat> uh, let's go on to Romans 10. Uh, 14 through 17. 
And it says, how then can they call on him that they have not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing about him? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all obey the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the message about Christ. Um, you know, there's a direct, the thing that kind of struck me is that there is a direct correlation uh, between our conversion and others. And, um, you know, it doesn't end uh, with our conversion. Um, what it does, it, it shows us our responsibility, and hopefully we have that excitement uh, in our heart. Uh, and we can, uh, but we need to, uh, you know, feel that responsibility uh, for, for growing in the faith. But we also need the, to have that responsibility for sharing Christ with others. Uh, I was thinking about uh, a lot of times if you're, if you're like me, um, or at least like our household, we get a lot of um, uh, shopping, or we do a lot of our shopping online now. And, uh, you know, we'll order from Amazon, I guess, and um, you know, the, the, the UPS and FedEx uh, uh, are well acquainted with our driveway. And uh, I was thinking about uh, when we get something that's a, a little bit fragile, uh, we open it up, we open the package, and uh, there's all this bubble wrap around it, or there's some of those little packing peanuts. Um, uh, the girls love to pop a, uh, the, the bubble wrap. I do too, actually. Uh, but sometimes the, the peanut uh, packing peanuts can make uh, kind of a mess. But I was thinking about the care that is taken uh, when there's such uh, when, when there's something important uh, in that package. Um, you know, all the precautions, um, all, you know, you can track your package. Uh, you can do all these things to make sure that there's safe arrival uh, from one uh, place, you know, from the warehouse to, to our driveway. And I was thinking about that, you know, we have to think uh, as Christians, we're carrying precious cargo, and that's the message of Christ. And we have to make sure that um, we treat that uh, with, the, with, the due res with the respect that's, that it's due. Uh, and that means uh, taking it seriously, and that means, um, again, not being overbearing, uh, not uh, forcing or, or trying to, to be somebody you're not. Uh, but that does mean that we need to take up you know, we need to make sure just how special that message is. And we have to remember that uh, a lot of people don't know about that message. And it's our responsibility through our actions and, um, you know, how we, how we uh, behave and, and what we do that that message, you know, people can see how that, sp how that message uh, is uh, special to us. And they'll want to know more about that. Okay, that's probably a good place to stop on some good news about that. Um, I do want to share something with you. Uh, I have uh, really enjoyed this. Uh, this uh, last year has uh, taken a little bit of an unexpected turn uh, from uh, what we have uh, expected and what we normally have for, for the class. Um, I hope you, you have gotten some uh, joy out of this. Uh, you know, hopefully some of you have stayed connected um, through some way, even though maybe you have moved away. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that uh, I feel like it's probably time for me to step down. And um, as far as I'm concerned, um, prob uh, May 23rd uh, will be the last uh, time I'm broadcasting Facebook. Um, and so I'll be stepping down from uh, the Joy class. Uh, again, I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a blessing to me. And um, I just wanted to uh, let you know that I love each and every one of you. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what uh, Scott, uh, Pastor Scott, has in store. Uh, for the class. Uh, we've discussed uh, just a little bit about that, but uh, again, I'm not sure uh, what he has in mind for that. Uh, but I just want to tell you, um, it's been a lot to me. Uh, and, and again, that's something, um, hopefully I'll, I'll see you around uh, in church when things uh, get uh, fully back to normal. Uh, but I just want to tell you how much I've enjoyed it and how much I love each and every one of you. All right, uh, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for all that you've done. Uh, thank you for being a good God. Thank you, Lord, that you have uh, just uh, shown, um, um, you know, you, you, you're just willing to show us who you are, Lord. And all we need to do to you, Lord, is just make sure that we draw near to you. Thank you, Lord, that, um, you know, that uh, following you, um, you know, it may seem tough, but, but getting started is, uh, is, is easy. And thank you, Lord, that, that you've made it that way. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you've said that, um, you know, you've uh, come to confound the wise. Thank you, Lord, so much that 
um, that that continues to be the case. Um, it seems like just it's, it's so simple, Lord, just believing on you. And uh, Lord, just uh, it, it's just something that we have to almost get used to, Lord, that, that it's so simple to start that way. Lord, help us to, to, to always treat your message as something that's important, even though it's simple, Lord, something that is special and something that is uh, something that is just um, um, so important, Lord, not only for us, but for, for others to hear as well. Lord, we ask these things in your name. Amen. All right. Have a great week.